Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 25 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm coming at you from New Hampshire. And I'm recording from Scotland. Hello. Hello. And hello, listeners. (laughs) Hi, everybody. To returning listeners, and if you're a new listener, hello. Hi. And thank you for coming back from some more listenings. Yeah. We were just saying before we were starting that, you know, episode 25, like that seems like a significant number, even though that's really not, but it it feels like, you know, (laughs) ooh, 25. It's a quarter century. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We wanted to say a special thank you to a couple listeners who said hi on our Ravelry page. Thank you to Amanda, who is Queen something. In no way. In no way. I don't know. But that we, we can't figure out what your actual Ravelry name is. But Amanda said hi, as well as Robin6862. And I know Robin was saying how she's just started to learn how to crochet and her daughter's learning how to knit and they're getting into this whole like fiber world together, which is really cute. Yeah. It's like the opposite of us. Yeah. With the knitting and the crocheting. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure they're enjoying it. The, uh, the knitting and the crochet. Yes. The knitting I, for a second, crochet, I thought you were just yeah. like really being just really full of yourself as if, as in they're really enjoying our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about the knitting and crocheting because we love the knitting and the crocheting. Obviously. And the knitter, knitters and the crocheters. Mm-hmm. So uh, another nerdy BuzzFeed quiz for us this time? <laughs> yeah. You picked it this time though, so there's that. I did because we just saw the new Avengers movie on opening night. Ooh. The name of the quiz is Which Avenger Are You? So which Avenger are you? I am Captain America. Uh, me too. <laughs> really? Yeah. How boring. <laughs> I know. I was actually, I, <laughs> I, oh my gosh. When I read it, I was like, oh, I don't want to be Captain America. I was looking at the questions. I was like, I don't really want to change my, any of my answers though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I think is funny is the last question is, which Avenger would you want to make out with? And I picked Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make out with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so just to be, the um the results, it says, you're a bit old-fashioned, but in a very endearing way. You have a strong sense of morality and strive to live up to your ideals every day. Your integrity is inspiring to others. Uh, uh, <laughs> but speaking of making out Who with did people, you want to make I out said with? Thor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, I wasn't sure. I, so I always go back and forth between... Captain America and Thor. While we were watching the movie, it's like every time one of them came up on the screen, I was like, he's so pretty. <laughs> Chris Evans. Captain America. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what did you, did we pick everything else? No, no that was different. Yeah, that was different. Then, um, well, I was, I was looking at the color. So one of the questions, the choose a color question, I was trying to decide which uh-huh. Avenger would be which color. Because I picked the um, the sort of maroon burgundy color, uh-huh. which... I picked the blue in the middle, I think. I can't tell which one is highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I picked the blue yeah, in the middle. Probably, yeah, the like bright blue. The light blue, light bright, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like the red one might be Iron Man and the black one must so be wait, the Black what, Widow. Which one did you pick? The, the burgundy color. Oh, you, you did pick the burgundy one. Yeah, so that's different oh. than what you picked. Um, yep. What about your weakness? There wasn't actually that many questions. I said I'm very stubborn, but... Oh, I said I have trouble reading other people. Uh. A musician. Did we pick anything the same? I picked Rihanna. I picked Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, no, we have to get down to the bottom of this. Where would you want to go to relax? I said the beach. Me too. Okay, I said the beach as well. Um, and what about... We'll just go through all the questions, because there really wasn't... Yeah, there wasn't that many. Uh... It was what's important to you at the end of the day. I said family. Yeah, I said family as well. So, okay, maybe it's the family and the beach. The beach. (laughs) Well, because there's only what one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only seven questions, but there are 
probably nine results. Mm -hmm. So really, you could pick an answer that... Maybe it's just random. Well, if you if, if you picked... Because there's only seven questions. If you picked an answer for each question that corresponds to a, seven different of the results, mm -hmm. then what would you be? Would they have to like pick one by random? So the fact that... Well, this was made in 2015 before all the other Avengers, right? Mm. Like... Well, yeah, because this one... Uh, Black Panther and... This one was... Is must have Avenger? been made uh, when Age of Ultron came out. Mm. But yeah, so I've not seen the new movie yet, so no spoilers. Yeah, I won't spoil it <laughs> for anybody that's listening, if they, anybody cares. Well, <laughs> we've got some nerdy <laughs> listeners. Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, we're, but I think we are the nerdiest. Or maybe I should say, I am the nerdiest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we had somebody um, on our last video explain a bit more about uh, Avatar, the oh, last Avatar. Airbender. That's yeah, something yeah. we don't know very much about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and um, Queen Inoue, she she's a anime, anime, anime fan, watcher, which we aren't yeah. either. So, no. yeah, not in our nerd sphere. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> uh, okay. On to our fiber content. Mm -hmm. What do you have for whips? So I feel like I'm going to be a bit boring this week because I've not started any new projects, but I'm continuing my pleated cardigan, which is a pattern by Kat Golden, and I'm using my John Arbin uh, yarn that I got from EYF. The color by numbers? Yeah. No, the knit, knit by numbers. Knit by numbers. Knit so it's by like numbers. <laughs> all of sort of color. So last time I talked about having trouble with the short rows, and then... Oh, no, actually. And I also talked about, I wasn't sure how long to... So the pattern instructs you to continue carrying on until the piece measures a certain length. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure how... <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but I wasn't sure how to go about that. And you said that I should just... Or that for you would normally just mm -hmm. measure the piece as you're working, like unblocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So I actually asked, there's a group of uh, people who went to EYF, Google crocheters that were sort of went and were all orbiting around Faye from the crochet circle. Mm -hmm. I messaged them for advice and everybody else also said, oh, I would do it from the unblocked piece. Mm -hmm. But I mentioned as well that because when I did my gauge swatch, I had to stretch it quite a bit, especially mm -hmm. um, vertically, mm -hmm. you know, with that factor in and someone mentioned that, oh, actually, maybe in that case, that would affect things. So mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to, I'm not actually going to block as I go, but I'm going to calculate it. Gonna pull to, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, so I know like roughly how many rows equals however many finished blocked inches. You're going to do the math thing. So I'm going to do the math thing. Yeah, but, but just roughly, but and also measure and just kind of meet somewhere in the middle, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's all I've got for that. I haven't really gotten that far. Oh, okay. Well, um, as far as whips go, goes, go? Um, <laughs> King, I'm having problems with grammar today, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm still working on the bubbly sweater. I haven't really been working on it that much, but I did start the ribbing on the front. I've decided... Not to do the regular, what is this? The bottom, the bottom hem. Mm -hmm. it, it is originally just a, it's a um, brioche rib. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do a split, like have the side split, mm -hmm. like a split hem. So, yeah. you know, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, so I had to do a little bit of math. So I've split it and now... This is the front that I'm, I, I'm just starting the ribbing. So by, by this weekend, I'll probably have both the front and the back mm -hmm. at least ribbed, and then I can start the sleeve. So hopefully I can finish this before, well, I mean, I'll finish it probably within the next few weeks. So you, you're just doing like a plain bottom, because it looks like from the pattern that there, some people do, um... A row of color oh, work the, at the, the bottom. The, the color work, yeah, you can you can do that or not. Mm -hmm. I chose not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think Jillian would like that. Yeah. And she she was not around to 
for me to ask. Yeah. So I, I kind of like it I plain just, anyway. I can clean. Yeah. So I'm doing the plain bottom, but instead of it around, I'm doing it with the split mm-hmm. side hem, mm-hmm. side seam. The, I've got that going, and then I started another fiddlehead mittens. I think this last couple of years is all about knitting the same thing over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've never actually done before, but this is going to be um, another present. So the first one I made earlier this year is going to one of your cousins, and this one's going to her sister. Her sister. So mm-hmm. the yarn is um, a Zauber ball, I think. Hang on. It is. It's not actually a Zauber ball, but it's a Shoppel. Shoppel? Chapel, chapel yarn, uh-huh. those crazy, uh-huh. crazy colored ones. And so instead of changing colors, I'm just having it, the yarn do the color uh-huh. change. And then the base is just some sock yarn I had lying around. A blue. Yeah, uh, like a turquoisey blue. Mm. That's, that looks really nice, actually. I really like that. Yeah, I me too. I actually started this on, because I bought a darker turquoise when I bought the, the crazy colored ones. Mm-hmm. And I knit it up to before the thumb gusset, and I didn't like it. It was you can, you, you couldn't see the contrast as well, mm-hmm. and um, it was okay. But then part of the the colored yarn has that same blue in it, and I'm like, oh, when I get to that part, I'm really gonna hate it. So I just ripped it out before I got any further and mm-hmm. started started this one over again. So yeah, that's all I have going on. So wait. I- when you said you were starting your fiddlehead mittens, I thought you were going to say you're starting the ones that you were going to make for yourself. No, I'm going to do that last. <laughs> so you're really going to be just making the same projects over and over again. <laughs> yes, because this is for the sisters. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not going to make any for anybody else, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really neat pattern. I like how um, the lining and everything that you put the lining inside. Uh-huh. You can do that with just about any pattern. But, is that part of the pattern, or did uh, you just do that? It's part of the pattern. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, they've done all the math for you, so that's perfect. Mm-hmm. I like it when other people do the math thing, because <laughs> I don't like doing the math thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all um, I have as far as whips. I mean, I have a lot of the projects in my head that I want to start mm-hmm. that I can't because I miscalculated certain things what about fo's do you have any fo's i do so first thing i have is my life plus afghan <gasps> oh my god it's that i posted it on instagram Finally. so if anybody follows us on instagram they'll have, probably have seen it i started it over a year ago just over a year ago and really has it been over a year yeah i started i think i started in march last year oh wow that is that would be over a year. Yeah. So, yeah, I call it the Life of Plus Afghan because it's it's like one of those free patterns from Karen, but it's so basic. It's just, um, you know, you put five granny squares together to make a plus and then they all interlock. And I didn't even do uh-huh. like a, a traditional granny, which is what the pattern uses. I used uh-huh. to, did a, a, I don't really know what, what it would be called, but where the 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 gaps are only in the corners rather mm-hmm. than every whatever three is it normally uh-huh. um and i actually quite like that because it then all the gaps create like a another pattern within like a grid like a grid yeah, yeah. like a, a lattice uh-huh. so, yeah 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 so i i like that and then i i was kind of waffling over what border to do but i ended up just doing what they recommend in the pattern as just a crab stitch or a reverse single crochet what makes it reverse you you work it from left to right instead of right to left okay so i'll I'll post a picture of the the close-up of the the edge but you end up kind of with a twisted um stitch Mm -hmm. and it it makes a really nice border Uh, i don't think you. it looks almost like it looks like it's almost um, like corded or not scat um, what is it called? Yeah, like almost um, like a pico, a pico. Like when you when you held it from far away, it looked almost like a pico edge. Oh, 
I don't know. But yeah, I don't really think you could do anything with that other than use it as an edge. Like you couldn't really work on top of it. And if you did, uh-huh. I don't really see what the point would be. <laughs> so yeah, so that is done. And I'm very and happy came with up, it. Right? Yeah. And so wh- where is it going to live? Um it, it's just been folded on the couch or just thrown on the couch when I've been using it and stuff. Mm-hmm. But somebody, uh, my friend Kate commented on it, Instagram saying, um, I hope you're keeping it. I was like, yeah, I'm not giving it away. It took <laughs> ages. Also, I'm never making a blanket again. <laughs> I mean, I think if I, if I decide to make another blanket, I'll, it'll have to be either one that, that doesn't need to be sewn together or it can be crocheted together. Because I couldn't crochet it together because I wanted the invisible seams. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But well, is is that just you? Because you could have just crocheted it together. Mm, I'm sure the pattern says to sew it together as well. Because that's oh. the whole look of it is like you know uh-huh. each each color block looks like a plus without being yep. mm-hmm. chopped up. So yeah, so I finished that, and then I also finished my blur shawl. Woohoo, look at that. Yay. It's so pretty. Which was sort of like a a crescent. This, this is a crescent shawl, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. By Deanne Ramsey, who is Addie Day Designs. And it was made for Earl Grey Crochet's Blur Along Cal. Uh, so I, I finished it with just a few days to spare, which I, when the Cal first started, I was just working on it so much. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to finish this like in two weeks. <laughs> uh, but no, no, I just, I just finished it. And so what I ended up, is it, is it fingering weight? Is that, yeah, it's fingering weight. Is it fingering weight? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty basic. It's, it's only, um, sing, it's all single crochet, half double crochet or double crochet. Not, nothing, nothing fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's, it makes a very like clean, modern, what's it? <laughs> so I, and so the small size is you're meant to use five different colors and the large size you're meant to use six different colors. So I was mm-hmm. on my fourth color and I posted pictures and stuff with the sort of bright blue mm-hmm. yarn, um, which was the Ching Fibers one. And one thing I wasn't really happy with the way it was speckling and color pooling. Mm-hmm. And two, it was really bright. Like mm. it brought out some of the, the bits of blue in another one of the yarns, but it was just too mm-hmm. much. And I, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about it. It looked, it looked all right. So I'd pretty much gotten to the end of it that, and had started to introduce the last color, the mint sort uh-huh. of green. Uh-huh. And I, I was thinking about it and I just decided to rip it out. So I, I ripped all of that out. So now I don't have any of the blue. It goes from the white to the coral to the soft gray color, which is sort of a mix of lots of different colors to uh-huh. the mint green. And then I stopped there. So I'm only using four colors because I actually thought it was big enough to use mm. as sort of like a scarf. And mm-hmm. if it was longer, it would have annoyed me, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very pleased. And uh, some a couple of people have mentioned that it looks like a watermelon, which it does kind of. Um, it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the, the outside is the green bit. I think if, uh-huh. if I could have found an even more perfect mint green, I would have wanted more of a bluey mint mm-hmm. rather because this is quite a green color oh and then the last thing i did i changed um the pattern calls for a border or an edge the edge along the curved bit is sort of like a a shell and i i mm-hmm. I, I started to do it just to see what i what i thought about it but i, I didn't really like it in the end i like just sort of the clean curved line but what mm-hmm. I did do is along the straight edge, I just did a row of single crochets to sort of hide that raw edge where like you do the mm. color changes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I just about had enough of that coral yarn, which I'd run out of. <laughs> so I pulled it from my that swatch. <laughs> so I had just, just enough to do the two bits that I needed for this straight edge. So that I think mm-hmm. is, looks a bit tidier. So, did you did it take a long time to fix that that boo boo we made last time when you pulled when oh. you didn't have the stitch marker? Uh, no, I might just had to pull back like two or three rows or something like that. Uh-huh. But then 
in the end, I pulled it out anyway because that was part of the blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's very springy, <laughs> oh, so wow. I've, I've worn it out a few times already. And I'm very happy. It's, yeah, it's the, color, the colors are perfect. Yeah. For spring. Uh, if I mean, spring is actually starting to come along in Edinburgh as well. Well, we we skip right past spring and we're in the middle of summer here. It was 88 degrees yesterday. Oh yeah, I, I, when you <laughs> sent me that uh, screenshot of the weather, I turned to my coker and oh, well, well, I did convert it into Celsius. It's 31 degrees. I was like, it's 31 degrees in my pants. And they were gobsmacked. They were gobsmacked? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, and it's just as hot today, except it rained, so it's a little cooler. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> It's going to be hot again tomorrow. I know. It's ridiculous. We went from wearing, you know, like we were just wearing hats last week. <laughs> and today I was like, oh, where are my shorts? I got to find my shorts. <laughs> and I put all my fleece away. I didn't even want to look at it. I didn't want to touch it. <sighs> and I actually had the air conditioner in my room on for a little while because it got really humid up here because I'm on the third <laughs> floor. And with the iron on and my sewing machine and all the lights I have, it gets really, really hot. Uh-huh. So... I didn't have my, if I had my computer on, it would have been even hotter because mm-hmm. this thing, this thing, um, creates a lot of heat. So emits a lot of heat. Um, yes. No, I was to say, you've not told me what FO you have. Yep. I was getting to it. <laughs> I finished my quarter hat. Nice. I didn't even block it. Hmm. I was, was going to say, nice it, it looks it. really like smooth and soft. Yeah. Has it, I'm not even going to block it. I mean, that's uh, the beauty of garter stitch, I guess. You don't even have to block it. Mm. So yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. It looks good on me, too. It's very slouchy. I'm not going to put it on my head because I've got my my headset on. And I like I like how the purple yarn, which is the pod parts or the leafy parts, it looks like, it looks like watercolor. Mm. I mean, they're both hand-dyed. Uh, the, pink, the pink yarn is, is more of a solid... And anyway, so it looks, I like it. So I can't wait to be able to wear it next fall. Nice. Because I'm not going to be wearing it anytime soon. At least not here. Which is the one, I'm just looking at the yarn that you use. Which is the one that's with the merino silk? Is that the light, the purple? That's the purple. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, I wish I could touch it. It just looks It's very really squishy. Smooth. It just looks smooth. Okay. I think, I think it's, yeah, the... The stitch plus the pattern plus the yarn just makes it look like really smooth, uh-huh. <laughs> like sleek. Yeah, I can make you one too if you want. No, I don't want to wear sperms on my head. <laughs> <laughs> They're tacky. I can't see it now. I just can't. <laughs> Uh, they don't look like they don't look like tadpoles or sperms. They look like leaves. <laughs> but they look like sperms. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, yeah, well, I guess neither of us have uh, done that much crocheting or knitting this past couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I had it. I have an excuse, though. Um, your sister Emily was, was here last week. Mm, and Madeline had her and spring I break. Did. Yeah, Madeline had her spring break, and Emily was here. But we can talk that later in your tastic. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, so I don't have a Mommypedia for you. I've uh-huh. tentatively titled this Mommypedia Guest Edition, even though we don't have a guest <laughs> in. But because um, uh-huh. last week I asked you about the sort of typical yardage of certain weights of yarn. And uh-huh. Sandra from the Cherry Heart Podcast commented on the video with the rough guidelines that she normally goes to goes with yeah so uh-huh. it's nice and easy to remember it was 800 yards for lace weight five 400 yards for four ply 200 yards for dk and 100 yards for aaron or worsted this is for 50 grams 100 grams is that what you said 100 grams i'm sorry okay yeah i mean obviously like super super rough like uh-huh. guidelines but i feel like just having that in my head just makes, I mean, I don't know. I just wanted that information. So now I have it. Um, and then okay. I thought because I was mentioning something that somebody else has said, I'd also mention a while ago, I mentioned I was listening to the Two Used Fiber Adventure podcast, probably uh-huh. back in like January or February. And I had mentioned that they were talking about positive ease. And mm-hmm. it was Kelly who had done the math 
the circumference of circles or whatever to figure out what a certain amount of positive ease actually means. So the way she put it was if you could, if you imagine that your tape measure could float around you, how much Uh space would there be between your body and the tape measure all the way around? Okay. So she figured out that if you have two inches of ease, then you have roughly a third of an inch between your body and the sweater. Roughly a third because it would basically be one over pi. Oh, okay. So her general rule of thumb is that if you divide the amount of ease you have by six, which is two pi, then that's the space. So with like, so if you've got two inches of ease, you divide that by six, that gives you a third of an inch. So if you had six inches of ease, you divide by six, uh-huh. you'd have one inch between your body and the sweater all the way around. Okay. I don't know. I just, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I remember mentioning that and I couldn't actually remember the actual math that was, she'd I used. I think it was, it was last episode that you mentioned. No, it was a while ago. It wasn't a while ago. Yeah. Or maybe it might not have been last one, but it was, it was recent. Really? It was pretty recent that you mentioned it. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I asked you about, I asked you about, um, measuring, trying to figure out what size to do for the pleated cardigan. Maybe I mentioned it again in that episode. Anyway, but I, I just thought that was a really handy thing to know because, yeah, when you think like two inches of ease, you, it doesn't mm-hmm. really... It sounds like a lot, yeah, but, but it's once not. you distribute it across your whole girth. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's that's a nice rule of thumb. Yeah, no. I... Put that on a, on a chart. Yeah. I have a chart of, um, of like... Um, Anyway, there's like charts and in, in all over the place. So <laughs> you should put, make a chart of that too. Did you have uh, your any bits and bobs this week? Absolutely nothing. Okay. I, because you know. We'll just breeze past that then. <laughs> I did have something for a few of our favorite things though. You do? Uh huh. And I haven't so. Done that in a while. Yeah. So your excuse for not having done a lot of knitting was that Emily was there. My excuse is that I've been reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> and an actual book a, yeah an actual book on my e-reader but an actual uh-huh. book i started it on monday uh-huh it's currently thursday and yes. i'm like over 300 pages in or something like that <laughs> um so it's the third book in the neapolitan novels so there's four in that series and so the third one's called those who leave and those who stay and it's Translated from Italian, the author is Elena Ferrante, but that's just her pen uh-huh. name. She's like uh-huh. this mysterious author who's just like, no one knows who she is really. And um, it's these, she's written other books, but this particular series of novels like is particularly famous. And uh-huh. so I remembered back in 2015, the fourth book, of the last book of the series was published. And that was back when I was still working at Beacon Press. Uh-huh. Obviously Beacon Press publishes not novels, but you know, mm-hmm. I had heard about this last book coming out and people were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there was all this fanfare. And I'd never heard of the books before. And the cover of actually all of the books, at least the American versions, just look so bad. They they look like really <laughs> bad, like, I don't know, I don't want to say bad. They, they look like beach reads, like women's fiction, which uh-huh. is fine. Like, I read that as well. Like bodice rippers? No, no, just like really like froofy okay you know like contemporary still like uh-huh uh-huh so i didn't really understand what all this hype was about um but they're actually you know there's a lot of literary merit and and whatnot uh-huh. and so basically it it's a story of uh what starts with the main character and i think it's like 2010 and she gets a call from um her friend to say that her best friend from childhood has just disappeared Mm -hmm. and then so she's then telling the story back from her childhood from the 50s up until presumably the present so the first book starts in the 50s and now this third book isn't set in the 70s Mm -hmm. um but it's it's very yeah the writing style is very particular it's it can be a bit of like a slow burn but 
oh, I don't know. It's just, it's just really good. Um, just the, the two characters, the two girls, they have such an, a, such a strong friendship, but it's almost like bad for both. Like it's both good for them and bad for them in a way. And like, they're not always particularly likable. Their lives just, you know, the things they do, you just kind of sit there thinking like, why would you do these things? And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just really good. <laughs> I don't know I do. how they would be as audiobooks, but... Yeah, yeah, you didn't do a very good job describing it. <laughs> it didn't interest me at all. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like if they could, if they turn, I could imagine it being turned into, like, a TV show, but, uh-huh. like, sh- stripping away some of the more serious bits, and it would be, like, a soap opera, basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, they, 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 you know, they're from, like, a poor neighborhood in Naples and there's just a lot of like violence and like she she makes a lot of observations about how like men treat women and their Mm -hmm. wives and that kind of gets brought up and oh I don't know it's just so good okay I'm not doing justice (laughs) whatever it's just it's just really good and it's Uh... the reason why I've done like pretty much no crocheting this whole week. I I just I get home, I do a bit of reading. I do you know drink my coffee and I do a bit of reading. My lunch breaks, I'm like reading. On the bus, I'm reading, even though it makes me car sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I haven't. I was actually thinking that I haven't re- actually read a book in a while. <laughs> and um. I mean, we have bookshelves full of books. It's not like we don't have enough books for me to choose from. Mm. But it's so hard because there's so many other things I want to do. So it's like, if it's not an audio book form, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> I've become so spoiled. <laughs> but I do usually have more time to read in the summertime. So mm-hmm. we shall see. So you mentioned you had something for Nerdtastic. I assume it's The Avengers. Yes, Nerdtastic. We saw The Avengers. It was the a end. long no movie. spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. It was two and a half hours, two hours and forty minutes. What? And Madeline insisted on watching it opening night, which was Thursday. So we went. We saw the nine thirty showing um, because we had things to do earlier in the day. So anyway, we got there, and it was kind of annoying because people were just talking and talking through throughout mm. the movie, and. Rude. Um, they were very rude, and Emily was very annoyed. <laughs> she said, oh, these teenagers. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, you're not that much older than them. Because, <laughs> you know, Emily was home, too. Uh, so, you know, some people died. Some people didn't. I cried. <laughs> so, so you, you liked it? I did. I, like, I liked it. I cried. Um, that's all I can say, really. I've not read any, like, reviews or anything, but, like, just from, like, the trailers, it's, like, Everybody makes an appearance by the looks uh, of it. Just about, yeah, just about. And it, it, makes it's it. not like too much. Like, does it all still make sense? Well, like, I was I was watching um, somebody, uh, one a, a YouTuber, talk about the the movies and the movie, and he was saying that there's so many different storylines going on. That it's almost impossible to give like a chronicle, ch- chronological order of how things happen just in within the, movie. the one movie. It, within the movie, you can say, okay, this is what happened with the Hulk, you know, the Hulk story, mm. and you can, you know, and then this is what happened in the Thor side. Da, 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 da. But but because they kind of bounce back and forth between, I don't know, seven plots or whatever it was, and mm-hmm. um, so like, yeah, so that that was um. I think if you if you didn't watch any of the other movies, it might have been a little bit confusing. Though mm. Emily hadn't seen either of the previous Avengers movie. Uh. I mean, she has seen like Thor and yeah. Iron Man and Spider Man. No, she didn't see Spider Man yet. Some of the other movies. So so she you know she has an idea of of uh-huh. the the universe. And she was able to figure. It. I mean, it's it, it's it's a comic book story yeah, after all. It's not it's not you know that. formulaic and it's plot. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it was good. The you know the effects are great mm. and yes, mm-hmm. Sam surprised me because he actually said he wanted to go see it. Well, they filmed part of it in Edinburgh, and you see Waverly Station. Mm. Yeah, no, I remember when it. they did that, but 
No, I was just surprised because he normally doesn't show that much interest in superhero movies, but I think because it's just gotten good, like, good reviews, so. Yeah, yeah. Did he see the other two? No. Yes, I think he, I think he's today. the same as Madeline. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, same as Emily. Like he's seen Bits. some of some of the Iron Men and maybe uh-huh. whatever. I. Well, she well. So after we got home, she did watch the other two <laughs> on demand. <laughs> Emily, yeah, because uh. I mean, she came home. She came home practically went Thursday. I mean, it was Wednesday after midnight by the time we got home, and we saw it Thursday night, and uh-huh. we were doing stuff during the day, so she didn't really have time to watch anything uh-huh. so she watched that and spider-man after she saw the movie she's like oh okay that makes sense mm. yeah i i tried to put on the first avengers cause it's like oh well if you want to see avengers uh-huh. you might as well watch the first ones on netflix or something and he wasn't even paying attention so i was like well <laughs> do you even care <laughs> I get, yeah you don't really have to watch the no avengers. no <laughs> <laughs> but then you know there were like a couple characters she's like who the heck is that like well if you didn't see guardians and you know you wouldn't know who mm. they are do, do, do they stuff. reference any of the tv shows or no just the movies no i don't think so no and that's good because like but I, I, the, I, but the people were saying that oh um ages of shield it's gonna yeah, I wonder what it's going to do to their timeline. Or something oh, yeah, because like definitely the, the movies affect, yeah, the Agents of uh-huh. S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, uh-huh. I think I, I lost interest in that. I I, I don't watch it. I mean, I watch it over Madeline's shoulder when she watches it. She's still it, watching which... it right now. Yeah, she's still catching up oh, on it. I, I think I just kind of kind of gave up. Stopped well, like, I, you know, I watch it like the way I watched um, Walking Dead. Zombies. Yeah, Walking Dead. Zombies. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, okay, wait, who's that? Wait, wait, is that the guy that <laughs> did this, that, or the other? And you're like, no, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, I know what's going on, but I, I, I'm, I don't have enough patience to sit through a whole episode because it just annoys me. It's like, oh, my God, this show is getting so stupid. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, the movie was good, and we have a whole year to wait until to, to see what happens to... The character. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> He's like, watch you struggling to not say stuff. <laughs> but I think uh, Mark Ruffalo, who plays the Hulk, Hulk yeah. he spoiled something like a year ago. Uh, I vaguely remember. Yeah, but I don't actually know what it was. But, <laughs> but you don't know for sure. And it's like, uh, what's his face? But, um, the one that plays uh, War Machine. He was like, dude, like as soon oh. as he opened his mouth. So I don't know. But anyway, so I saw that video. I was like, oh, yeah, he did. He did <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was good. Now <laughs> on to the next, um, I think the next movie that Madeline really wants to watch is Jurassic World. Hmm. Yeah, just she, Chris Pat, Pratt. <laughs> She does like him. Uh, but I mean, I want to watch it. Just, oh, you know, we're so dinosaurs. embarrassing. <laughs> Telling everybody about her celebrity crushes. <laughs> <Just listen. laughs> oh, God. Sorry. You know, but, you know, dinosaurs. I like I like the dinosaur movies. I mean, come on. You guys grew up watching Land Before Time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not Madeline. Madeline didn't. You and Al- Emily did. <laughs> Madeline's too young for that. Yeah. Well, she had she had um, Ice Age. Mm, that's true. Do um, you have a sh- uh, anything for Shop Talk? I do. Yeah. And, and just for any new listeners, um, my mom has an Etsy shop selling project bags and tote bags and such. And I know you have something to talk about because you sent me a picture about, of it. And I showed it to all my coworkers because I thought it was hilarious. Oh, and I think I left it downstairs. Um, well, I have the other one. Hang on. So here's the here's the second one that I'm making. So it is. I'm calling it Harry and Meghan, and it's it's a tote bag that's made from an apron. Oh my gosh! And it's got it's illustrated with a wedding theme of mm-hmm. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. You can mm-hmm. see, like, their back, and then, like, the, the carriage, and the ring, and the Union Jack. And what looks like a, it kind of looks like a little Charlotte and 
Uh, George? George? Is that his name? There's like two little kids. Like, Baby, like yeah. Well, look like that. It yeah. kind of looks like a Susina. <laughs> It is so, when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get this. It's so cute. But like, I just can't I love- believe you found an apron with that print on it just yeah. in the States. I know. And it's it's got the date and everything, 2018. Okay. It's got the year, not the date. <laughs> oh, so the year. So when I when I, when I I saw it, Madeline was with me. I was like, wait, when's the wedding? When's the wedding? How much time do we have? Uh-huh. And I looked it up. I was like, oh, I only have a few weeks. <laughs> I couldn't make two bags. <laughs> <laughs> so you got you have two. Uh, right now I only have one. I'm in the process of making the second one. So. But you you had two aprons to make. Two I have two bags. aprons to make. Limited edition, two guys. Very limited because that's all they had there at the store was the two two aprons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it is it the same size as your other tote bags? It looks massive. Um, it's a it's slightly bigger, mm. not that that much bigger. But because they're aprons, there wasn't anything I can do about this curvy part. Mm-hmm. Where the apron curves, yeah. And I wanted to, I wanted to keep the artwork up there, yeah. Because if I cut that off, then I would have lost cut the off. top bit, yeah. And so I made little pockets in the front, yeah. That's They're kind of like pants pockets. Do they connect or no? <sighs> no, they don't. Yeah. And the back is the back just more of the pattern as well. Just the yeah, the back has more of the pattern. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah, I like the artwork. Yeah, it's yeah, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny though. Yeah, it is pretty funny. I just the wedding that the wedding fever has. Oh yeah, we're we're here. having a um a royal wedding themed uh night for guides. Oh yeah, in a couple weeks. Yeah, I don't really know what that entails, but it does entail getting dressed up. So you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I think I think our options were is it the Oscars that are coming up? Maybe maybe the Oscars. I don't. Know. Yeah, I think when we were doing our planning somebody suggested having like an oscar night so the girls could get dressed up if they wanted to but then it got switched to royal wedding night still gotta get dressed up <laughs> oh i guess the girls like to get dressed up speaking of girl guides slash girl scouts just came on the news this morning i saw About that boy scouts. the boy scouts yeah boy scouts of america is now going to be known as scouts of america well, it's like Scouts BS. It, they're still Boy Scouts of America, but they've just sh- made it into BSA. Well, they're gonna they're gonna accept girls now. Yeah, it's been it's been a thing for a while now. Like they announced I know they it were thinking ago. about it. I know they were thinking uh, about it, but I but didn't know here was here the Scouts are boys and girls. It's the same organization. Yeah, but the girl they've guides? been boys and. Uh, Is Girl Guides the same organization of? Is girl guides is no no girl guides is girl scouts so okay. world wags or, yeah yeah world so association of girl guides and girl scouts whereas yeah. boy scout I, I i don't know scouts here used to be i think boy scouts but because there are girls now it's just the scouts i see mm-hmm. so i think a lot of girl scouts are not happy about it yeah i think i kind of agree i don't know how i feel about it yeah, I don't know. I, I'm. I guess I'm mixed in that. Like, I suppose it's good that it gives girls more options in terms of what they want to do. But I think it also comes from this place of like, oh well, Girl Scouts isn't like good enough, or like it's too, too girly. girly. Like it's too girly. You don't learn fun things. You don't go to go camping as much. You don't get to like. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like I don't know if um, I know um, you know having. All of you guys been have been involved in scouts. I feel like Girl Scouts tradition. I mean, in the last when you guys were little, it wasn't very structured. It, was, it all depended on who you got as a scout leader. Yeah, and all scout leaders are 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 volunteers. Mm-hmm. So you get whatever experience you get out of it is all dependent upon if you got into a good troop. Mm-hmm. But. I think with Boy Scouts, it's more structured. You have, you know, there's certain the things that you have to do. It's yeah, but there's always a way to half-ass stuff. (laughs) You know, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Or actually do something. I mean, I don't really know a whole lot about Boy Scouts. I mean, it's it's just the Girl Scouts that I'm I'm familiar with. Mm. Uh, So, I mean, I think the Girl Scout. Wags, whatever, is a very good organization. Yeah, because I think we're still in a place where we need organizations that specialize in 
you know, the development of girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you guys all, you guys all got a lot out of your scouting years, especially mm-hmm. you, since you were in it like your whole entire childhood, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Um, and Madeline and, and, and Emily, they were Girl Scouts through middle school. So, you know, you guys all have a lot of fond memories. Mm-hmm. Camping. We were just talking about camping mm-hmm. um, when we camped with Emily's troop. And you you came along as a helper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Th- this is quite the tangent. How do we get on this? I don't know. but I, I think do you love, started I, it. You started it. I started it? Yeah. No, you were talking about girl guys, and I, I was like... Oh, damn. I it. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Are we not allowed to talk about tangents at no, all? No, I just I just tangents? thought it was funny that that's what we were talking about. Mm. We're girls. We're talking about girls. girls. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder how, how many of our listeners were Girl Scouts. Or Girl Guides. Or Girl Guides. Mm. Let us yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I I am still enjoying volunteering, but I'm I'm still waffling between whether or not I want to do like leadership qualifications or not. Uh-huh. I don't know if I'm that invested. <laughs> like it's it's nice to be able to show up and then like not have to be the one who plans everything or yeah, just do whatever the reprimands the, the girls. Wants you to, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, I, I've I've done a few things where I've planned like short. Mm-hmm. or whatever but i don't want to have to be responsible capital r responsible <laughs> yeah also oh yeah. my gosh okay this is the last thing i can say about guys but i just <gasps> we got invited to go on a camping trip in february and one of the leaders put it up to the girls and february, asked them, already i mean you're already planning something for next year yeah well i don't know but so she asked the guides if they wanted to do it. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. Because we haven't gone camping with this group of girls yet. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> February is outdoor <laughs> camping intense in February in Scotland. I was like, why did you ask them? Of course they want to go. They haven't gone camping yet. <laughs> they didn't agree to anything. <laughs> they go camping at a <laughs> garbage dump. Like, oh. Let's go camping at a garbage dump. <laughs> Uh, do you want me to bring a good sleeping bag? To you? Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, I might quit by then. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, that's the last thing I'm going to say about guides. <laughs> uh, have fun with that. Are we all talked out then? Mm, I guess so. Yeah. Unless there's something else you want to talk about. No. Very I, I, fiber light this this episode. Yes, we are very fiber light. I will, I will finish my book this weekend so I can mm-hmm. actually get some crocheting done. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I want to finish my sweater so I can start something else. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can find the show notes for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. And you can follow us on Instagram at KCAC Way Podcast. Um, my personal Instagram is Allison here. And my mom's personal Instagram is upstate underscore viv. And make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever else you listen to podcasts or on YouTube if that's how you prefer to watch. And you can join our Ravelry group. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry Yarn Podcast on the groups tab. And you can see the, the thread for the episodes as well as... Um, the BuzzFeed thread so you can tell us what Avenger you are see if there's any more boring Captain Americas out there (laughs) (laughs) us and our family oriented good old fashioned (laughs) boring values (laughs) so thank you for listening and remember to keep calm and carry yarn (laughs) 